As we prepare to celebrate Mother's Day, we'd like to take a special real one look at a very special mother, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and her role in the history of salvation. How can a mother watch her son tortured, humiliated, and finally murdered? We can only imagine. Connie Anderson is a woman with a deep devotion to the mother of Jesus. She belongs to several organizations that honor Mary. And as a mother, Connie not only sees Mary as a very unique person in history, but as someone who can be a model of faith and obedience today. When I saw the movie, I was so gratified to see the depiction of Mary. Uh, as a strong woman, a woman who loved her son, a woman who didn't wimp out, because that was basically the Mary that I was raised with. That was the Mary that I, I knew. And I think it was based so much on, the, not only on Mary, but on the women that I knew growing up here in Baton Rouge, from my own family, from the people that I knew, from my parents, the, the women that I knew that my parents were friends with, from the teachers I had at Sacred Heart. And, and even at St. Joseph's Academy. Mary is depicted in this movie uh, according to scripture. Uh, do you think that other denominations outside the Catholic uh, Church uh, uh, realize her place in the Passion and in all parts of Jesus' life? Well, I know the Episcopalians do because I'm friends with a lot of Episcopalians and, and I've actually discussed Mary with some of my Episcopalian friends. Uh, some of the other denominations perhaps maybe intuitively understand her, but they haven't really come to completely know who she is yet. They don't have the advantage of tradition that we have. They only go sola scriptura. Um, some of the people that I've encountered, some women that I've encountered, um, are a little reluctant because they, I think they misunderstand our devotion to Mary, but perhaps this film will change that. I hope it will. We see in the, uh, this way of the cross, down the street as Jesus is carrying this cross. We see the evil one on one side, on one sidewalk, uh, perhaps, mm -hmm. and on the other side is Jesus' mother. Is there a parallel between uh, evil and the goodness and the obedience of Mary to God's will? I really think Gibson was trying to get that point across, and I think it was a, a, a very good point uh, it, it made me think that perhaps Mary's humility was a real counterpoint to Satan's pride and that uh, God the Father knew what he was doing when he wanted Mary to be the mother of his son because he knew she'd be there at the end. And uh, hum her humility, in a way, was a kind of cloak, I think, a kind of protection, even though perhaps she wasn't aware of it, I think her humility probably frightened Satan away. Because if you notice, Satan's not there on, the, on Calvary. He's there on the way up to Calvary, but he's not there. Or the, hmm. the actor who's portraying Satan, who's actually a woman. Hmm. I looked it up. It's, I, I couldn't really tell, but it is a woman. Um, and I, I just thought there were so many points of Mary's portrayal. Uh, the fact that she, when she's uh, in the temple and, and Jesus is in the dungeon below and she, she searches for him and she knows where he is and she goes down on the stone and she puts her cheek to the stone and you could tell that Jesus is aware of, of, of her being close by, I, I think that um, that kind of uh, simpatico relationship mm -hmm. they had with each other was just beautifully. It was portrayed. a very uh, a human part of that, that that digresses a little bit from sacred scripture. And okay. and uh, Jesus is a young man; he's a carpenter, and he's out uh, fixing this table. And yeah. and his mother says, "Okay, it's time to eat now." And he starts <laughs> in, and she says, "No, no, no, no! Wash your hands first. So she pours some water in his hands. He splashes it up in her face, and they. They're laughing like a, a mother and son would. You think that's a, a real good depiction of their... Oh, I have always read The Wedding Feast at Cana with that kind of, of line. And, and I, I am from a theater background. So when I read scripture, I do read it with a theater approach to it. And I have always thought that those lines were read with a real playful tone. And I believe that Mary and Jesus knew each other so well, they were so close, that they did not have to say a lot of words. And when she said uh, they have no wine, he knew exactly what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he was playful with her at the wedding feast of Cana. I think the, the reading of, of his verse, his, his lines, were kind of playful. And uh, I think so I, that, that particular scene with uh, him building the table and her pretending to, to try out chairs mm -hmm. and saying how it would never mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. uh, was basically the reading that I had for the wedding feast of Cana. So perhaps that scene wasn't 
from the scripture, but I think you can apply it to one of the scripture readings. How would it feel for a mother to watch her son brutally treated, scourged, beaten, and on the way to be murdered, and to watch him fall under the way of this cross? You see Mary's face, and then you see the flashback right. to when he was uh, seven or eight years old, and he trips and he falls, and she rushes to his side to help him. Right. And here, she's helpless to do that. How would a mother feel? Oh, I, I think that, and I've talked to different women about that particular scene, and I think that that is, is such a universal uh, reaction for a mother, for a mother's love. I, I think that that is going to transcend countries, cultures. I think this is just part of what it means to be a mother, to have a motherly heart. And Mary is the, the prime example of a motherly heart. And without thinking. She instinctively wanted to go to her son. We see a lot of times that the church is made up of the hierarchy, the church is made up of men, and women may not have a part uh, to play in it, but yet you walk away from this movie seeing outside the, Jesus, Mary is one of the primary characters. What does that say to, to women and their faith? Right. I am coming to this, this particular comment, not from a political standpoint and not even from a theological standpoint, but from the standpoint of being a woman. And I am so glad to see Mary portrayed as a strong woman, a loving woman, a woman who was willing to accept her son's sacrifice. And I think that in many ways from what I, I, and I do keep up, I do read on things that Mary symbolizes to us, she models for us how we accept the Savior, Jesus' sacrifice. She shows us how we have to say yes to letting Him be Savior. And for women in particular, as mothers, I think it takes a great deal of strength to be able to stand there and to allow one of your children or your husband or a friend to do certain things. There's, that's a particular kind of sacrifice that I think women are uniquely suited to do. And I do believe that perhaps this role might help cl clarify the gift of women being women and that we're women from the inside out. And it begins with being able to give love. Um, the abortion issue is so central to that, understanding self-giving love to protect that, that child. It doesn't take away from your intelligence, your abilities, or, or, but it, it's how you focus on someone else, how you protect that other life. Does this movie in your mind depict the fact that life is a life of suffering? that leads ultimately, if we are faithful to our Creator and the call to which we were created for, even though we go through suffering, there we're called to, uh, to the eternal joy of the resurrection. Is suffering part of what we go through as it was in the life of Jesus? Yes, and I, I think that because we live in a fallen world, if we believe in the reality of sin, we know that we're gonna, we are going to have a cross in our lives. And I think that it would be a, a disservice for a mother or a teacher uh, to try to portray life as something other than that. And if you look at the rosary, after the joyful mysteries come the sorrowful mysteries. So if, if you say the rosary, you're into reality, but then you always follow up with the glorious. Of course, now there's the luminous too. But with, the, uh, with, the, <laughs> with the rosary, and Father Carville uh, mentioned this fact that the movie is basically a combination of the scriptural passages that have reference to the sorrowful mysteries in the life right. of Christ and the, the stations or the way of the cross. Uh, is that what you see? Oh, yes. And I, I, in fact, I was talking with my son earlier today uh, about his impressions, and I was saying how I'm old enough to have grown up with those traditions, the, the devotion to the way of the cross, uh, and I, I went to Sacred Heart. So the, the artwork at Sacred Heart is not overly sugary. So I grew up with a pretty realistic uh, depiction of Christ all around me. And, uh, but one thing that I think that Gibson brings into the movie is, and I think this is something that's very important if you think in terms of developmental psychology, and I'm a teacher, so I, I believe in developmental psychology, is that Mary, I don't believe Mary could stand at the foot of the cross and be as strong as she was if she had not gone through the joyful mysteries. 
I believe that joy is the foundation to being able to handle suffering. But if you look at the Joyful Mysteries carefully, the Joyful Mysteries are not pure joy. There's, always, there's a little bit of sorrow mixed in. So I think that Mary grew, and she grew in wisdom, age, and grace along with her son. So when it came time for her to say yes, and she actually said yes in a silent way to affirm his sacrifice, I think that um, she knew that suffering was going to come, and I think that we have to understand that too. Suffering is going to come into our lives. We just have to understand we're not alone. Do you think the saying yes at the Annunciation when the angel says, you will bear, bring forth a son, that her accepting that even with the consequences, and then her accepting the death of the son now on the cross, there is a parallel? Oh, absolutely. In fact, um, one of the, since I like to talk, I'm always impressed with Mary because she's a woman of few words. She, all she had to do was say, be it done unto me according to thy word, and she became, and God followed through. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. At Cana, all she had to do was say, they have no wine, and Jesus began his ministry. I think it was very important for her to be silent at the foot of the cross because I think if anybody could have said, come down off the cross, she was the one, and she didn't say anything. So her silence spoke. And I, her silence was an ascent to our Lord's offering up. And her being there, she joined her, uh, her ascent to his offering up. So she's very much uh, a participant in his, his sacrifice. The closing out of this particular segment we're going to have, and everybody will have just some little comment about uh, what was important to remember about this movie. What would yours be? that there's hope for women uh, with Mary, knowing that we can be with our loved ones in the face of pain and to look past it with eyes of faith, not to see the suffering, but to, to believe that God is with them and that the resurrection will come. Channel 15 presents an hour special on the Passion. Watch for times and dates starting soon. We'll have more on Real One coming up. Stay with us.